morning. I'm Dr. Faith Elliott Rossing, Director of Economic Development and Tourism for Queen Anne's County. And I'm on a 200 acre farm in the northern part of Queen Anne's County, owned by Bell Nursery. And I'm here with Gary Mangum, the owner, and Bill Stoops, who is the chairman of the Queen Anne's County Economic Development Commission. So thank you very much for having us here today. You're quite welcome. We're happy to have you. Um, first, we want to open up with a few comments from Gary and tell, uh, elaborate a little bit on the history of this farm for us and also about the family, which seemed to be steeped in uh, plants and flowers from a Mangum perspective. <laughs> Thanks, Faith. Um, we're, we're really excited to be here, first of all. My, my parents found this farm about uh, between 25 and 28 years ago, and uh, it was a working dairy farm at the time. The uh, owner was... was uh, slowing down uh, on the dairy side and really looking for something different to do mm -hmm. and we started talking with him my parents started talking with him about horticulture and and growing some mums here and we we started uh at that time with uh i think about ten thousand mums uh and and today we're doing a little bit over a million mums here right. in the fall I noticed that you had posted on Facebook at one point in time, thanks for being my friend, uh, that this is the mum capital of Queen Anne's County. Uh, Queen Anne's County and probably for that matter uh, most of the East Coast, probably north of uh, the South Carolina, North Carolina border. We probably grow more here than, than most anywhere else. And so you distribute all of your mums uh, where geographically and then how? Uh, from this facility we distribute to the Mid-Atlantic region uh, through exclusively through the Home Depot. We. Uh, we have a relationship with them that we've had now for 25 years, and uh, it's grown from three stores to almost 200 stores today. Well, that's wonderful news. And you also place Bell Nursery uh, employees in those Home Depot stores. Is that correct? Uh, we do. Spring, summer, fall, we have uh, it ranges from um, a, a, about 1,000 uh, seasonal employees, and we have about 350 full-time year-round employees that work in the stores. And that doesn't include your network growers. Can you talk to us a little bit about that process? Uh, sure. From this facility, we, uh, we actually plant young plants uh, from this facility as well as our facility uh, across the bridge. We plant uh, millions of young plants each spring uh, in containers. Those are shipped to the farm families that we do business with. Uh, over here, we have about 25 farm families that built greenhouses to, to grow for us. Uh, longest relationship now is about 19, 18, 19 years, and the newest is probably in the last three or four years. Uh, but we plant the young plants here, uh, ship them to, to their farms and their greenhouses. They grow them for six, seven, eight, ten weeks, whatever the crop requires. And they ship them back to our distribution facility where we then go out to the, to the Home Depot stores. Exactly. So you, ha you grow perennials, annuals, and as a part of that is the mum process and also poinsettias, correct? Uh, that's correct. This facility here, we grow... Not that many poinsettias, a decent number of poinsettias, but primarily uh, mums, again, over a million units this year, and uh, about a half million perennials this year here. Well, we're certainly glad that you're located here in Queen Anne's County. Um, as I mentioned before, we have Bill Stoops here with the Economic Development Commission, the chairman, and the uh, EDC is getting ready to take forward to the county commissioners their strategic plan, and agriculture is one of the top priorities in that plan. Bill, would you like to speak to that? Uh, yes, I would, and it's easy to see why you're so successful. It's a beautiful spot here if you can see all the flowers and the green, and you just do a magnificent job. Um, agriculture is a big part, and diversification is even bigger for what for the future of Queen Anne's County. And we love to see other things other than just grain farming happen in Queen Anne's County, and you've taken that to a whole new level here, and we really appreciate it. Uh, we understand there are some challenges in our area, which we're trying to address with our 10-year plan, looking at connectivity through broadband to help you with your business to meet um, the needs with your uh, customer base. And so we're hoping that we can address that with the new commissioners coming on board. So uh, again, we really appreciate your investment in Queen Anne's County, and we'll be here to stand ready to help you with whatever we can do to make sure that this is a successful venture for you and we can continue this uh, relationship. So we, we appreciate your uh, support of us in Queen Anne's County. And you're just gonna go, we'll go straight up with it. And uh, you'll see that I take this with me whenever I travel to any of our outdoor ranges or outdoor facilities. We've got a 150-acre perennial farm in North Carolina and then this farm here. Um, and you can literally 
uh, zoom right in on the crops from a foot above and skim the crop and, and take a look at the condition of things and see if there's any pockets of problems uh, or anything that's particularly good you want to go, go investigate. Um, and you can, uh, this will run about three quarters of a mile radius from, from where I stand. So I can literally at this, you know, at this particular farm, I can see the whole farm from standing in one place. Um, you go up as, as high as I've had it up 2000 feet, you know, and taken some great aerial shots as well as, you know, shots at the hundred foot range. So you can really, uh, see things you know, far away, good overview, get a good understanding of what's going on with your water levels and your ponds and things like that. Um, from, from standing right in the driveway. Um, and the other, the other thing is skimming the crops and just really being able to look at things either fast or slow. It'll hover in place. If it gets out of range, this is one of the neatest things about this thing. If it gets out of range, it'll come back to you. Um, it, it takes over, you know, the, the GPS takes over and it'll come right on back and settle down literally where you took it off from. It's pretty amazing. Now, if you didn't have that device, how would you have done all those things in the past? Well, the same way we, we do them today, which is walk the crops or, you know, get on uh, get on the Kubota and, and, and ride the crops. I mean, our, our managers all very much, you know, engage with the plants. Uh, it's important to produce good quality. But for me, from an overview perspective, um, if I want to see what's going on at the farm in North Carolina, I can call our farm manager there and ask uh, him or our, gro our head grower, uh, Kathleen, you know, to take take a good look for me, you know, and, and let me see what, what they're seeing you know, without me having to fly to North Carolina. Um, do the same thing here. We don't really have this deployed yet at our facilities other than just North Carolina and, and, and me with this one that I carry around where I go. So it's another example of agriculture using the latest in technology to really enhance their best management practices and the monitoring of their products. Correct. So you're getting a live feed to your phone? That's correct. You get a live feed uh, to the iPhone and um, you can adjust the camera up or down, you know, while you're, while you're here driving it. Um, it'll hover in place. Uh, the battery lasts about 25 minutes uh, per, per cycle. And it's real simple just to bring it back and bring it down right where you want. And what does something like that cost range-wise? Um, the unit itself is around $1,500. Uh, it comes with a camera that's similar to a GoPro, although not. I don't think it's actually made by GoPro, um, but it's similar technology. And um, about $1,500. By the time you get the case and the extra batteries and all that, it's around $2,000. Well, thanks. I, I, I'm glad you raised the connectivity issue because for us, it's really a decision making. It's part of our decision making process, and and frankly, it's really uh, not been uh, a positive, uh, as as you may be aware here. It's very very tough even to send the most basic pictures from here, you know, back to our back to our headquarters operation, which 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 we need all of our farm families to do. Some people really struggle with that, and uh, including ourselves right here at this facility. So it's a very, very important thing from a from a business owner's decision-making standpoint. Uh, I, I will say this county has been amazing to work with as we've grown this business over the years. Um, it's been it, the county has been fantastic to work with. I in fact moved my home over here about about a dozen years ago, and now live this side of the bridge, which I very much appreciate and enjoy. Gary, we have talked before about the connectivity issues that uh, you struggle with as well as other agricultural landowners and, and personal landowners do here in this area. And uh, we will be making that a focus as we move forward and probably bringing some other people out for a tour in the future just to kind of get a lay of the land, no pun intended, in, in order to kind of get a grasp on what opportunities we might have there. And it may not be long-term solutions, but an, a good interim solution might be a, a good way to go. Excellent. Glad, glad to hear it, and that'll, that'll help us as, we've, as we move the business forward for sure. We've got a lot of opportunity yet here. This land is about half developed, and we've got a lot of opportunity here for growth. Right. Well, we thank you for joining us today and for making Queen Anne's County a great place to live, work, and play.